Well, dang it. <laughs>
and it had that huge intake right there, just like the one you see on the John Wick for the 69. You see it right there. That was just an awesome, awesome body line. But 1970 Mach 1 out of Johnny Lightning. Dude, thank you so much. Then it looks like we have some sort of two pack. Oh, dude. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, dude, check that out. Holy crap, that is awesome. Manufacturer's series out of the 100% Hot Wheels. This is Mustang Monthly's magazine. That is a gorgeous fastback. Check that out. Ooh, it's a GT500, beautiful red, and then you have the blue with the white and yellow flames going down. It looks like a 65 2 plus 2. Oh, man. Oh, that is awesome. Let's see what the facts are in the back. It's the Sweet 65 and their Carol Shelby's famous performance enhancements on the 67 GT500. Man, that is awesome. Ooh, almost dropped it. A beautiful two-pack, man. I want to open it up just to take those rubber bands off because I don't want that red to get any bit of damage, especially that one, too. I know it's holding up the hood, but... Gosh, man, that is awesome. Steve, thank you so much, man. All right, let's go ahead and make some room. God, man. Oh, I can't wait to open that up. We're going to open that up later on. This one's going to go in the display since we do have some room. Again, Steve, thank you so much, man. That is awesome, awesome stuff to add to the collection. And some more goodies that we picked up from the Trader's Market. Went to go see my buddy Bob. No Zamax this time but he did have some good things. And I grabbed this beautiful casting right here. It's the Liberty Works Ford Mustang with the wide body in Grabber Lime. And then as soon as I was driving, I was like, man, you know what? I feel like I've had this one. And of course I came down and sure enough, we have one right there. I forgot we got that in an act of kindness package. Now we have two of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this one up and throw it in the display of the loose castings. But man, I could have sworn this was a new one. But when you have so many Mustang variations, it is hard to remember which ones you have sometimes. Now, when it comes to Hot Wheels, those ones are easy. But when it comes to like premiums, sometimes you're like, oh man, I don't know if I have that one. The Liberty Walk should have been an easy one to remember because of the color and the wide body. But for some reason when I seen it, it just seemed new to me. So there's number two for that. And then we went to the little Lego shop we have in the mall. The lady there is a collector and now she sells Hot Wheels out of her store. So she sells bricks for Legos and building all that. But then she also has an area which she has Hot Wheels and shippers and all that stuff. So it's hard when she's the owner and a collector because she picks out the one she wants. She already told us she did. But we were able to pick up the black card series of the Porsche 993 GT2. And here we go. Look at that, man. Such a beautiful casting. Me and John were going through the shipper and I was like, man, the only one I need is the Porsche. And I was looking through and I kept looking at the, um, it was the 240 or the 180SX that came out in the first, first wave of the black and gold set. Um, so the wing just looked very close. I was kind of looking through like, ah, oh, it's not in there. And then he went right behind me and was like, hey, here it is, man. So stoked to get this one we did pay a little higher in price but this is one i really wanted for the porsche collection and we have it so so there you go robo bricks she's in the rushmore mall awesome lady she collects the morris mini it's her favorite car she has a few i think she said in, in actual one-to-one -one scale mini cooper um, and she did say that from talking with Mattel that they are temporarily not making any Mini Coopers for a while. I don't know why. I think it's probably a retooling thing that they're doing. But who knows? Maybe they're redoing the whole tooling and it's not going to be a normal Mini anymore. That is the latest news I picked up. I can't really validate if that's legit or not, but... I trust her. She works hand in hand with those uh, toy suppliers. She might know a little thing. Next up, guys, is this old blue card. Check it out. It's the 65 Mustang convertible. I wasn't sure if I had this wheel variation, so I wanted to pick it up. Only $2 car. It's collector card number 162. So I don't think I have this one. And if I did, it would have been over here. So 
There we go, guys. Did not have it. Yes. Oh, that is awesome. So we got the five spoke variation, the white wall, and now we have the seven spoke. Let me just double check. I don't think I put any of my blue cards in this section. So yes, this was one I needed. I knew the seven spoke was one that just seemed like I didn't have it. And we have it now. Beautiful card condition too. Gotta love finding wheel variations or any variations to the Mustang, especially the opening hood. So we found that one. And then we did pick up some mainline castings. I just, I don't know, I just really wanted these. And here we go, check it out. We got the Volkswagen Treasure Hunt out of Encase. Check that out. It's a beautiful baby blue. You got the white Volkswagen Tampos with the Hot Wheels Treasure Hunt flames right there on the back. And of course you got the treasure hunt verbiage on card. So here we go, guys. This was in cases treasure hunt. Bob was selling these for three bucks, which I think is reasonable because we had a good drop of in case and those were all taken. So at least I was able to get one for the collection. We picked up another IROC Firebird. This is one of my favorite F bodies to be ever released this exact one. I'm talking about the gold true value out of this release right here. It's 98 first edition. I do have one. My card is completely jacked up. And this one, yes, this is an awesome one. I just need to make sure if mine's a card variation or not, because you have the blue car on card and then you have this red car on card. Could be or it could not be a variation to the collection, but this one is my favorite release and favorite color version of the IROC Firebird. This thing is just an awesome car and I just love the race look of it. And then we did pick up this one right here, the 2010 Toyota Tundra out of the Tokyo 2020. I used to have this one on card. I opened it and I gave that truck away and this was the only one out of the full entire series that I needed still. There was three white recolors that were released after the first wave of the first 10. And then they came out with this one um, and two other cars that were recolored in white and then they stopped. So this was one I wanted to add back into the, the collection so I can have that full series for 2020. This could or could not be valuable. So if you're looking into it as a collectible piece, it could be, I'm not saying it is, but the fact that Hot Wheels made this for an event that never took place because of COVID in 2020, I think this series could hold some value in the future. I don't know, but I thought it was really cool. And at the time I wanted to get the whole set before they stopped producing them at all. So if you don't have a set, definitely look into it, but don't pay crazy prices for it, guys. Try to pick them up one by one, go to antique malls, traders markets. A lot of people sell those and they just, you know, you can normally pick them up for a dollar a piece. So that is what we got for a buck. And then we did score this Johnny Lightning. This thing was too cool to pass up, guys. Check it out, Thunder Wagons, but it is a custom Corvette Nomad. That is a freaking awesome mix between a Corvette and a wagon. Look at that, guys. It is so awkward and kind of ugly, but unique at the same time. And here we go. Definitely an awesome one. Could not pass that up. I did support Bob by picking up some of his wheel swaps. You guys are gonna love these just as much as I did. It looks like he threw a sticker in here. Oh, check it out. Nice. My man. Oh, wait, we got one more casting. Look at that, it blended in to the bag itself. So we will start off with this one. Corvette Stingray, this is the concept version. I do need to clean it up, it's got some stuff on it. But here we go, beautiful charcoal metallic. You got the chrome OH5s all the way around. And there we go, beautiful. I do have the red one, and I believe another color variation. I just didn't have this one. But uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and clean this car up and make it look brand new again. There we go, much better. God, look at that. That looks super tough. But anyways, I was gonna show you guys the other Stingray version that I have in the Corvette collection, which it would be in, I believe, this one. Ah, maybe this side. It's gotta be on this side. Yep, here we go. Right here, I got the one in red. 
does have the FTE or Trap 5s all the way around. Check it out. Beautiful, man. That thing is gorgeous. I hate putting them on top like that, but uh, it is what it is. So here we go. Another Corvette concept for the collection. And we'll just go ahead and put it right on top of this one. All right. Got to do it gently, guys. I don't want any of the roof scratched up. That's why I really don't move these around too often. And if I do, I try to be very delicate because it will wear. I just got to find a better method to separate it or just buy more jammers. And then right here, guys, I did pick up this awesome wheel swapped Chevy Chevette. Here we go. This is one that I really wanted to do myself, but I mean, he did it already and I wanted to support his builds. And there we go. Look at that. Beautiful wheel choice, man. That <laughs> looks good. There we go. Look at that. Oh, that thing is nice. It doesn't roll that great because of the meaty tires, but that sure does look better. Oh yeah, that looks really good. So got this one from him. And then I also picked up this beautiful Maranello. He repainted it, so it is not the original Ferrari red, but the wheels that he threw on there, just really make this look super exotic. That looks beautiful. Now it does have some paint chips on there. I am going to repaint it. It's probably not gonna be red, um, but you can see he tried to polish up the base. The wheels are just beautiful. Glass is a little messed up, so it's gonna be a custom for me. I am gonna restrip it. He does use some really good color choices for his customs. I thought this was a pretty good one. So he actually gave me that one because I kept standing there and buying more and more stuff as I was there. And I was like, all right, I got to cut myself off. Um, but some of these guys, I can't pass up. I've bought a lot of customs from him, a lot of wheel swaps. Um, here's another wheel swap that he did of the Mach-E. This one's got some premium white six spokes. Look at that. That just looks good. He tried to add some grill details and some headlights. Still, beautiful casting. I don't care what you guys say. I think the Mach-E as far as a casting and a real car is a phenomenal driving machine. Now, I am not on board with electric cars, but that one, you have to respect 1400 horsepower in an all wheel drive converted. I don't know, that thing's just a beast, but I think this livery and these wheels just look amazing. So there we go, guys. Couple wheel swaps and a repainted Ferrari Marinello. So yeah, guys, that is what we picked up. Awesome mail call from Steve. Again, thank you so much. You did not have to throw these extras, but I really, really do appreciate it because that two pack is awesome. The 70 Mach 1 out of Johnny Lightning is amazing, but this 2020 GT500 out of Pink Slips, man. And then this stuff from the Trader's Market, guys. Awesome little finds. I was stoked about this one right here, guys. The wheel variation to the 65 Mustang. Sometimes I come home thinking, hey, I don't have it. And then I find it on the wall somewhere, case in point, like this one. I forgot I even had it. So now I have two of these, which Bob gave me this one for 15 bucks. So not too much of a waste. I am going to open it. And then this beautifully weird and unique custom Corvette Nomad. That is just too cool. That is cool, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below, but I think that is a cool piece for the Corvettes. So I did want to throw in at the end of this, guys, if you want to help support the build of Ruby and getting her livery going, we did sell some Hot Wheels to cover the new logo that we will be throwing back on the car. Instead of it being a three-piece design, it is going to be a one solid film which is gonna be protected to prevent stains. And if you wanna help support the cause and build of Ruby, you can always hit up my PayPal, which is in all my description boxes. You do not have to donate, guys. But if you would like to, because it's been asked and I've been getting messages and I've turned them down, I'd rather just either trade or sell a Hot Wheel so I can take out of the collection and turn it back into Ruby, just like I did on a couple parts that I put in her. But if you would like, you can do that or you can become a member to the channel. It still helps out in any way. But what I was thinking of doing for those who do help donate towards Ruby, I will be putting your name somewhere either on a plaque or on, on some type of area on the car. So that way when I go to car shows or do venues or meet and greets and all that stuff, it'll have a spot on the car either underneath the hood, inside the dash, somewhere. 
it's gonna say this tribute car was built by this community and it'll have everyone's name on there so if you want to do that that'd be awesome that is just the best way i can think of thanking you guys is your name will be on that car and yeah, I think that's a pretty cool deal. So like I said, you don't have to donate guys, but you can just help support the channel by clicking that subscribe button. That thumbs up definitely does help. And yeah, that is all we got. So I will keep you guys posted on the status of Ruby. And until next time, this is the Mustang Hunter. Peace.